In this video, we'll take a look at how to use three steps to sketch to graph a pretty basic sine graph. Y equals sine pi over two X. So that pi over two coefficient may give you a little bit of a pause. It does look a little bit strange, but it actually makes for a really easy equation to graph. Um, so we will dig into this and see why that's the case. Okay, so as usual, we have our outline, our equation and our grid. And we know that this is an unshifted sine graph. So we are working from the template equation, y equals a sine bx. Okay, and so that will help us jump into our method. So step one, we find the essentials. First, we need to identify a and b. So in our equation, our understood coefficient out front is one. So a is one. Okay, that means our amplitude is one. Um, and then B, we can see is this pi over two coefficient in front of X. Okay, so to break that down like we usually do, B tells us a lot of information about our graph. Um, first of all, it tells us how many cycles happen between zero and two pi. Now, I don't know about you, but pi over two cycles happen between zero to two pi. That sounds a little bit strange, but if you just were to do 3.14 divided by two, we know that's 1.57. Um, and so we should see that 1.57 cycles, so about one and a half cycles happen between zero and two pi with this method. So we'll take a look at that at the end uh, once we have our graph, but it is helpful to know that you should see about one and a half cycles between zero and two pi. So that's the first useful bit from B. We also know we need B to find the period. So for sine, we calculate the period using two pi divided by B. So we have two pi divided by pi over two. Okay, let's just flip that. We have two pi times two over pi. Okay, well, we understand two pi is over one. You see that pi is a common factor that cancels out and our period is actually four here. So unlike a lot of trig graphs that we may be used to, we will not have our axes labeled in terms of pi here. We'll simply be counting by regular integers. Okay, um, and let's go ahead and dig into the scale labels since we're already talking about that. We know with our method, we like to choose our horizontal scale labels so that they make our graph as clean and neat and concise as possible. So all we need to do to find what we'll label our horizontal tick marks with is take the period and divide by four. And this makes sure our key points will align with these horizontal tick marks. So luckily enough, four divided by four is one. So we will count by one for our horizontal axes, axis. And we know our vertical axis can be labeled using A. So just counting by ones there as well. Well, that makes for really easy labeling here. Let's count by ones for both of our axes. Okay, note that that fourth tick mark to the right of the origin should match your period. Period's just the length of a horizontal cycle. It does. Um, let's keep going. And I'm purposely going to put just one more there, six. Okay, and we'll label just to negative four in this direction. And we can count to two both ways on our vertical axis. All right, so that is easy enough. And we've really got it broken down. We're ready to move on to step two, plot the key points. Okay, so for a basic sine graph, an unshifted sine graph, and it's not reflected, we know our pattern should be zero maximum, zero minimum, and then we'll repeat. So starting from the origin, we say zero maximum, its y coordinate comes from the a value, zero minimum, it's just got a y coordinate that's the opposite value from a, and then you would repeat. So we'll put our first repeat, our first point of the next cycle at four zero. Okay, let's go ahead and sketch this in. You can see we really do a lot of the tough work or the, we do the bulk of the work in step one. And then as long as you know the pattern for step two and you know how to sketch and duplicate the pattern, um, steps two and three really fall into place nicely. Okay, so we draw our sine curve here. 
All right, we've got a nice sketch of one cycle of sine of pi over two x. Now, I am going to purposely keep going here. So if we continued our positive cycle, and I might even just tack on here, even though it won't be quite to scale, seven, eight. So you know your next cycle continuing in the positive direction, you have zero, another maximum, another zero, a minimum, and then you'd have a repeat of the next cycle of the pattern. So it looks like this. So let's take a moment, look back at B. We said B is pi over two, that's about 1.57. And we said, okay, so about one and a half cycles should happen between zero and two pi. Well, two pi isn't labeled on our horizontal axis specifically, we're not in terms of pi here, but we do know that two pi is about 6.28. So let's just take a look and see. Here's six, so 6.28, two pi is about there. Okay, just estimating. So let's see how many cycles happened between zero and two pi. Okay, just following along. Here's one cycle, another quarter cycle, a half cycle, just a little bit more than one and a half cycles. And so that's a great way to use B to double check your graph and just make sure that everything makes sense together. All right, let's do one more cycle, just if you want to on that negative part of the horizontal axis. Take off our highlighting. So just to be clear, this was a new cycle here. Okay, and we'll start at negative four zero with another zero, then a maximum, then a minimum, excuse me, then a zero, then another minimum. And we've got a third cycle. So, it seemed to be an intimidating equation, but really when you use the method, when you follow the steps um, and stick to your process, it becomes a very, very easy and kind of interesting graph um, to create.